Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a comparison between the Microsoft Surface Pro 8 on the left and the Surface Laptop Studio on the right. Now, these are two very different machines, but many of you have been asking which is worth the money. And really that comes down to what you plan on doing. To be clear, the Pro 8 is the king of the hill right now when it comes to tablet two-in-ones. Remember, it does not include the signature keyboard or Slim Pen 2. That's an additional purchase. And at the price point we've got right here on the left side of the frame, you're looking at the Core i7 with 16 gigs of RAM and a half terabyte NVMe. That's 1900 US dollars before you add the keyboard with pen, which is another 280. And of course, you could opt not to get this, but it would not be a complete Surface Pro 8 experience. Yes, you could dock it with a Thunderbolt dock, use an external keyboard. There are a lot of ways you could go, but ultimately I feel you at the very least need this signature keyboard cover. And then if you want the slim pen, obviously get that as well, which I do recommend if you care about inking, taking notes, whatever it may be. On the other hand, this machine is the mid-tier version of the Surface Laptop Studio. It retails for 2100. And by the way, if you didn't see my review of either, either of these, you may want to take a look. And there are links in the description for both if you want to purchase them, either one or both, uh, whatever floats your boat, you may need both in the household or individually. This is the more powerful and more affordable device of the two, uh, interestingly enough. It starts at 1600 as opposed to the Pro 8 that starts at 1100, but every single segment uh, or configuration, I would argue, is you're better in your favor if you care about overall performance when it comes to the CPU, and then if you step up to the GPU version that I have here, uh, you're going to do better in terms of performance when it comes to the Surface Laptop Studio. And this is obvious. This is a laptop. This is a tablet that can be a laptop. And so that means at every turn, the laptop should be outperforming uh, the Surface Pro 8, and it does. So uh, Core i7 quad-core 11th gen Intel processor. Uh, it's an H-series CPU as opposed to the Ultrabook CPU found in the Pro 8, so a more powerful processor, complemented by 16 gigs of RAM, a half terabyte NVMe. Most importantly, the NVIDIA RTX 3050 Ti. Not the best GPU on the block, but a good mid-tier GPU for a laptop in this class. And keep in mind, this does not come with the Slim Pen 2, but it does come with a keyboard and one of, if not the best, uh, touchpad in the business. Those are two things you'll be paying for uh, of course, with one purchase with the Pro 8 that you're getting out of the box. So 2100 before tax here, over 2100 for this whole package before tax. And of course, a lot more computing power on the right, a better display in my opinion, better keyboard in my opinion, and the best touchpad, so clearly better than this one. Even though this is very good also, it's just not as good as the one here. Now with that said, let's take a look and a listen to the display and audio performance on both. I'm going to stop it there. I'll let this one catch up. And you should already see it. Um, the Surface Laptop Studio has the better display. It also has the better audio performance, but that's to be expected. It also has the larger display, 13 inches, uh, 3 by 2 aspect ratio, IPS panel, 120 hertz refresh rate. But you'll want to live at the 60 hertz refresh rate if you want that additional hour of battery life, as opposed to a 14.4 inch uh, IPS panel with very similar uh, specifications, and again, 120 hertz, but 60 hertz if you want to save that battery life. So it's really up to you. Um, but of course, I feel like the 120 hertz on the right has better application here because you do have a dedicated GPU. So if you wanted to do some gaming, it's not going to be just for inking um, and scrolling, which I think 120 hertz is good, but also a waste when it comes to productivity work. And if you're going to live predominantly in the 60 hertz realm, then, you know, I... I just don't see the use. Uh, I'm not saying I'm against it, but very limited use with the Surface Pro 8 as opposed to a wider array of capability with the Surface Laptop Studio. Now, let's take a look and a listen just to the Pro 8. Make sure we go up to 100%, excuse me. Audio performance this generation is excellent for all Surface products so far.
I mean, this really does outperform a lot of laptops that I, re uh, that I review. So not just Ultrabooks. Um, and it has better speakers than the Main Gear Vector Pro. So, uh, and that's a 17-inch gaming powerhouse, uh, $2,300 laptop. So go figure. But then again, this is close to $2,300. Uh, now let's take a look and a listen to the Surface Laptop Studio on its own. Make sure that that volume is all the way up. It is not. This is going to get a little crazy. And so there you have it. I mean, in my opinion, at least on the AV side, obviously, the Surface Laptop Studio wins, but not by a huge margin. I've already stated I think the display is better. I've already stated I think the audio performance is better as well. Um, it has a lot of things going for it, but it's got extra weight. So if mobility is your primary function here, the Pro 8 is going to always win. In fact, it will win against uh, the majority of the competing products on Earth. But if you care about a complete package and you are willing to consider where these two products stand amongst their peers, other laptops, other two-in-ones like the HP Spectre, um, Lenovo's Yoga series, uh, then you have to, the Dell XPS line, you've got to consider, you know, this is the more competitive product of the two. The Service Pro 8 has far fewer direct uh, competing products. I mean, really, um, Dell, uh, excuse me, Lenovo's X12 detachable that I compared it to is primary than two-in-ones that are close to its same weight, which the majority of them are about two and a half pounds, and they have, you know, slightly larger displays, uh, closer to three pounds, uh, the Spectre 13T, the 14T, uh, but, you know, and obviously the Yoga also has a competing model, but none of them are exactly like this except the X12, or if you're willing to look at the iPad Pro, or Galaxy Tab uh, S7 Plus. That's where you're getting closer, but even the S7 Plus isn't, doesn't have as large a display. Uh, both of these have excellent uh, Windows Hello capability and full HD uh, front-facing cameras. No uh, rear camera on the Surface Laptop Studio, so that might be the one area it underperforms the Surface Pro 8, which does have a 10 megapixel shooter on the rear of the device uh, that can also shoot 4K video. But I don't think that's important personally. Now, whether or not that's important to you, something to keep in mind. Battery life, as I stated, roughly the same on both of these, so that shouldn't sway you either. This is really about portability, and if you care about value, then the Surface Laptop Studio, uh, by far and away, is the clear winner. Uh, like always, when things are miniaturized, made smaller and lighter, you pay a premium. That's what the Pro 8 um, embodies, and I think that's completely respectable and ideal if what you plan on using it for calls on the slimmest uh, and lightest profile money can buy. And that's exactly what the Surface Pro 8 represents. Surface Laptop Studio has a lot more competition. So even though it can, again, go to three different positions with its display, it still doesn't do enough to differentiate to the point that we can abandon the competition. It has to still stay relevant. Now, when it comes to I.O., I'm going to go ahead and put this back up and show you what each of these actually has in store. The Pro 8, uh, the I.O. is basically the same, which again puts them on even keel in many ways. So two Thunderbolt 4 ports, um, arguably the most important part in my opinion to these brand new products because Microsoft has never made a device with Thunderbolt connectivity. It's a game changing capability. Um, these are not upgradable. I know Windows will tell you that you're gonna, you can upgrade the SSD and you can, but don't get so excited about that. I mean, to me, the better part is forget about trying to upgrade this, stick to getting yourself an external NVMe drive. That's where it's at. I mean, that will outlive the product and it's far more affordable. A couple hundred bucks will buy you a one terabyte NVMe drive like the Sabrins that I've covered that are there in the background and you're good to go. And if you get yourself a dock, you've got a full-fledged experience. I mean, the Surface Pro 8 is the king of the hill in the tablet that also can be a PC. You're not going to get record-breaking battery life, but it does have a complete redesign top to bottom, um, and it is excellent. But the only other thing, as you may have noticed on this, is your power button, uh, the Connect charge port, and that is pretty much it, besides an audio jack and volume rocker. Uh, so power button, that's it. Now, with the Surface 
laptop studio. As I mentioned, no camera on the rear, but you have that folding display with that hinge. You have a dedicated or discrete GPU. You still have a Kinect charging port, so you can charge this and use those Thunderbolt uh, 4 ports. Uh, audio jack right there. Nothing on the front except for the bay, the magnetic area to store the Slim Pen 2. So if you were wondering, that's where you'll put it if you buy it. And I think for students and professionals alike who want to ink, this is an ideal place. I also think inking is better on this machine than the Pro 8, just because you have a larger display that can change position without using a, a kickstand. But the range of motion on the Pro 8 is obviously greater. Um, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, just like on the Surface Pro 8. And that is it. You know, um, pretty much it. You're not going to ever open this up. Um, don't do that. You'll end up breaking it. Uh, both are really well made. Both are expensive. But as I've made hopefully abundantly clear through the course of this comparison, uh, the better overall attributes go to the larger and heavier Surface Laptop Studio. From a computing side, CPU, GPU, performance, value for the money, again, $2,100 retail, you're getting a real computer here on the right whereas you're getting an Ultrabook in the Pro 8. Uh, but as I've stated over and over again, if your primary use is all about portability, form factor, and you're not looking for you know, that much when it comes to computing power, if you're never going to really edit 4K video or large raw uh, digital still images or run software that's really demanding uh, design-oriented software outside of you know, content creation, so Revit, AutoCAD, if you're never going to run those type of programs, the Pro 8 will serve you well. And that doesn't mean you can't do those things on the Pro 8. You can. But it's more of a proof of concept experience than it is a practical one when compared to traditional computers. And I'm throwing the Surface Laptop Studio into that traditional computer category because its specifications line up very similarly to about, you know, a $1,200 to $1,500 laptop. Even though it's $2,100, you are paying for Microsoft's you know, from the ground up creation that they've made here with the hinge design. So hopefully that's meaningful to you as well. If not, you probably should be looking at something else altogether. Uh, the Pro 8, there's nothing exactly like it. As I've stated over and over again, you are absolutely paying for the Surface Pro lineup lineage, all that R&D money, uh, the flexibility of that kickstand. But most importantly, again, it's all about the portability of this product, which is dynamically different than what you're getting out of the Surface Laptop Studio, which is a more traditional computing experience with Microsoft's twist on the hinge, which isn't a new thing. But I'm glad that they are putting some money behind trying to perfect it because it's always been a good concept. Started with really Sony. Um, Acer has a product now. You know, Sony Duo, the Flip were good attempts, but they've been gone for nearly a decade. Um, I owned two of the Duos, the 11 and 13. Um, the Acer Concept D Easel, um, is still out there, but Acer is nowhere near the brand that Microsoft is, of course. Um, so there you have it. Portability um, at a, I would say, extreme price point, but easy to swallow if this is what you're after, because nothing else will literally match it. And then, you know, the same design language applied to a laptop with a display that can do a few tricks, which isn't a bad thing. Uh, both amount to great two-in-ones. Uh, but this is the more affordable, more powerful machine that is, of course, larger and heavier. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.